Thanks, Dan, and I'll, I'll pay you later for the, for the intro. Um, so in Breaking Tradition, I don't have slides. I have um, my, my, my talk on, on the uh, iPad here. Um, let me talk a little bit about IU and, and where I come from. And you know, we've talked a lot about servicing the enterprise, and I want to talk about my enterprise, the enterprise we have at IU. So um, we are about a $3 billion organization. Um, in the IT budget alone is about $120 million. We have about 110,000 students at IU. It's about 25% of the entire undergrad enrollment in the state of Indiana. So we're a large, large organization. Uh, we have about 11,000 staff and faculty. Um, I, I was going to impress you with the amount of grant income that we pulled in last year, and then I looked at Stanford. So I'm... I'm um, <laughs> A little embarrassed to say we only pulled in $600 million last year, which is actually very good for, for the university. A lot of medical research. Um, if you look at the, at the grants uh, administration page, you know, very impressive um, areas of cancer and diabetes and, and Alzheimer's research. Um, and, and to support all of that, we have large campus networks and, you know, 1,500 edge switches, a big core router uh, environment. Um, a large wireless environment, 100 controllers, thousands of access points all over everywhere. If you're a student, um, when you show up on campus, um, when you cross the border from, from town to, to campus, wireless is pervasive. You can go anywhere, connect anytime, anything. Um, a couple weeks ago, we had student move in on campus. In the first um, probably 36, 48 hours, we had almost 14,000 new devices registered to the network. Um, and these are everything from laptops and, so, and cell phones to Xboxes. Um, we had 2,000 requests for the first day for technical support from students. Half of those were for their, I'll say, non-traditional devices. My Xbox is at work. My roommates does. I, we need to have a game here. So, you know, we have a, 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 probably a different environment from an enterprise than most people have thought of today about what an enterprise looks like. But for a university and for for the few universities here, actually, um, their enterprises probably look like mine, and lots of other big universities look like mine as well. Um, and, and as folks have said all through today and yesterday, uh, these environments are complex, getting more complex, harder to manage, um, and at the same time, everything we do relies on the network. So in my office, I have, a, have, a, have an IP phone. Obviously, my computer's connected. My Lights are connected to the building network. My shades go up and down based on what the building network does. My card key gets me in and out based on what the network does. And all of those services have been sort of piled on top of the network without people thinking about the impact of an outage. Um, last Friday, I got an email that said we have a, have a problem in the data center. Um, uh, one of our, we have about 75 network engineers on campus. Um, one of them did a finger fumble. On a, on a firewall uh, filter. And for an hour and a half, what happened in the data center stayed in the data center. <laughs> and so you could not authenticate machines. You couldn't get anything in and out. Um, classes were canceled. On a Friday, that's not a bad thing. But again, you know, that's the impact of the complexity here. So probably two or three years ago, Matt Davey, brought this idea of, of OpenFlow to me and, and this clean slate program happening here at Stanford. And a few weeks later, maybe a month later, I ran into Nick at a conference in Chicago just by chance. And he talked about it as well. He was interested in our, in our large HP edge switch deployment. Again, thousands of switches across the, the, the environment. And HP is the, the vendor he was using in his test. So we talked. And from that, I think we, we decided pretty early on to make an investment in OpenFlow and SDN, and I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to do here. And I honestly have changed my slide deck here, or my notes here, four or five times while listening to people today. It was, it was very insightful to hear people talk about what they're trying to solve, the problems they're looking at, and, and so I'll give you a, a view here about what we are going to do at IU um, in, in this area. So um, we took this idea, this concept to the president, to, 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 to President McGravy. And we said, you know, we have a chance here to look at this disruptive technology in a way that can really set IU apart. 
We have the global NOC. We manage some of the largest, most, most complex networks in the, in the world. And we have all that data, right? We collect data on every network that, that, we, that we have. Um, we store all that data. And we have, have assembled a group of engineers, um, I'll say bar none, probably collectively the best in, in higher ed. Um, and, and, you know, let's put that to work. So what we proposed to him was an investment by his office for an um, intern program, for a research program, and trying to sort of increase the visibility of the university in very specific areas. So a couple years ago, we started um, a, a, a student intern program. We brought in eight students from around the country. And the goal here is to have these kids sit in the Global NOC in the areas of software development. We have 20 full-time software developers writing tool sets and monitoring and, and such. We have the operations center. We have you know, a full two sets of, of, of operations centers, a, 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 a full-time center and, and, and a backup facility. We have network engineers who deploy everything you can think of. We have folks who um, you know, do design architecture. So we placed these kids with, some with, with, with the employees and we ran them through some classes and, and they had to present at the end. And it, sort of the outcome was all of them said, this was great, I don't learn this back at my school. And, and we didn't pick just kids from Indiana, we picked some from other states. And we thought, well, this is, you know, this is interesting. And we put more energy into it this past summer and had, I think, 12 or 13 kids come in from around the country. It was, um, uh, Montana, um, Delaware, I think, some folks obviously from Indiana, and a few other, a few other places. And again, the, the response was incredible. They, they couldn't wait to get back. And, and the response I got from the, the, the people who sent the students to me was, boy, my employees wish they would have been able to come. So we've created this, this energy that um, around training and, and education based on real world things and, and what we do in the NOC. So this past spring, I had a chance to talk to the NSF about this, and um, they funded the intern program for two more years. I'm sorry, for, for the upcoming two years. And want us to develop a program that's portable. So instead of teaching kids 8, 10, 12 at a time, we're going to develop a program that can be moved out to other universities to teach 8, 10, 12 kids at a time using our programs and our, 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 our curriculum that we'll develop here. So what else we've done with, again, this initiative is start the um, in-center lab. Um, and this is really Matt Davies' project. You can talk to Matt a lot more about this. Uh, Ron Milford is here. He also uh, works in the lab. So the lab's purpose is to have interoperability testing of SDN hardware. So we're hardware ag agnostic. We're, we're vendor agnostic. We don't, we don't really care what brand or who, who, who makes this. But the goal is to write applications and programs to test equipment against someone else's equipment. So the folks manning the lab, aside from the management, are students, again, from around the country. So students get hands-on, real-world experience. Um, I heard someone say, today, we have a problem with engineering and education, and we're trying to fill that gap ever so slightly, but maybe we can turn out some students. In fact, we hired the first student from the intern program. Uh, he works for Matt, I believe. So, uh, so he works for Luke Fowler, who's our, our manager for, for software development. So again, I, I didn't want to have a technical discussion in this talk about what SDN is going to do for IU, but what we're trying to give back to the community with the lab, with the intern program, uh, trying to develop some research um, uh, staff. Um, uh, Martin Sweeney from Delaware has, has chosen to join IU. Um, Thomas Sterling from uh, LSU has joined this summer. So we're starting to create some excitement, some energy around what is happening at IU with the Global Knock, and I think you know, we'll continue to do that. Matt Davey, obviously, uh, is a big part of this, um, but the, the staff, we have about 90 people in the group. Um, we're all very interested in this, excited with this, to make IU a better network, to make the other networks we run a better network and provide resources for lots of people in the room. Again, there's not a lot of universities here, but um, you, know, you, you all are going to need staff and, and people who hands-on day one. Um, have, asked, have seen something, have tested something, have done something in, in you know, not just the classroom. We, we, we don't hire people who can recite page 42 of the Cisco operator's manual. They're not very interesting to us. 
uh, but people who understand how networks work, when things break, why they break, and know how to, how to handle that. Um, that. That's what we're interested in. That's what we're interested in teaching. So um, that's my minutes.